take your Bibles one more time, turn with me to the book of John, chapter 15, verse 9. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 9 through 17, and it says, this is Jesus speaking, he says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept the kept my father's commandments and abide in his love these things have I spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you greater love has no man than this than someone who laid down his life for his friends you are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, and all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should, re should abide. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that you will love one another. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, let your word resonate in our spirits this morning. I pray that I would decrease so that your word will increase. Father, there is no one like you. None like you, O oh God. We give you the praise, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can have your seats this morning. Thank you, Lord. I want to let you know this morning for the 10 minutes, or not even that, for the few moments that we have left this morning, there is nothing like the Father's love. There is nothing like the Father's love. The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. It's His love is the reason why we are here today. Make no mistake about it. For some of us, if we would stop to remember long enough in our sins, in our trespasses, in our way of life, how many of you would agree that if it was not for the love of God, you would not be here today? His love is what keeps us. His love is what sustains us. I was asked a question when we were on the mission trip heading up. We were on the boat, the boat from Pier 1 heading into Guerrilla. And a member of the team posed a question to me. He said, Jason, if you could summarize this trip that we are about to take, in a sentence or just a few words what would this trip be what would be the focus and I stopped and I thought about it for a moment and then the Lord immediately dropped in my spirit this is a love mission this is a love mission everything that you would do everything that you would say everything that would venture to even come out of your life will express my love and you know, as we looked at the trip, I don't know how many of you, how many of you were keeping up on Facebook with what was going on with the mission trip? Can I see your hands? All right. I just know next week we're going to actually have the, the full report. We're going to have a video. We'll have some testimonies from some of the team members. And it's going to be a great time in the presence of God next week. But I want you to know that this trip, by far, no. I have been on a lot of missions trip and I've seen a lot of teams but never have I experienced what I've experienced on this trip never have I seen the level of impact of the love of God being demonstrated by 50 people from Trinidad and Tobago never words 
really cannot describe. You really had to be there to understand what I'm trying to communicate to you this morning. But we went into the Amazon in the area of Leticia and some of the other villages in that area. But I'm here to tell you this morning, Leticia will never be the same again. Will never be the same again. Because of the love that was demonstrated. And I want to thank God, I really want to thank God for the team that really uh, gave a lot. They poured of themselves and I, now, looking back now when I, I see the whole picture, I realize why the enemy was targeting this trip from the beginning. And most of you may not know, but a, there was a lot of obstacles, a lot of obstacles that this team had to face in order to, to make this trip. And I thank God, and I, I see now, even on the trip itself, when we first got there, the few days, man, people were just falling like flies with sickness. And when we stopped to realize what was going on, we, we, I, I, it, it registered in my spirit. And now, I, looking back, I see why. I want you to know this morning, Faith Assembly, you can be proud of the missions team that was sent, because the love of God has left such an impact in Leticia such an impact in Peru, such an impact in Brazil, such an impact in the tribes going down the river. People's lives will never be the same again. And I know, I know it's, it, it, it's, just a, it's just something that you, you're taking my word for it, but you, hopefully one day you will understand what I'm, my heart is trying to express this morning. But I'm telling you, never have I seen such a powerful demonstration of love. And that's the key word. It was all love. The sacrifice that every single person made so that people could demonstrate and experience the love of God. It was unforgettable. I would never forget this, this, this trip. I'll never forget it. But this is what the love of God does. This is the heart of God. God says, you will know my disciples by what? By the love that they have for one another. There's no other criteria. No other, there's no other. If you really want to know who belongs to God, if you really want to know who loves the Lord with all their heart, Jesus says, I will show you and you will know them by the love that they demonstrate to one another. Amen. That's how you will know that they're my disciples. It's a love thing. Amen. It's a love mission. Church, we are on a love mission this morning. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm on a love mission. <laughs> this is an amazing love. It's an irresistible kind of love. The love of God that has been shed abroad in our hearts. In 1 John 4, 10, it says, this is love. Not that we love God, you know, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That is love. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I don't know about you, but every single day I give God thanks and praise for his love. Because if it were not for his love, if it were not for his grace, if it was not for his mercy, we would not be here today. All of us will be dead in our trespasses and sin. And when we would leave this earth, we would face an eternal damnation. But because of the love of God, because of His love, we're here this morning. I don't know where you're at. I don't know if you've been running from the love of God, if you've been running from God, but I'm here today to tell you, you, you cannot run the love of God. you find you. He'll find you. <laughs> He's going to overwhelm you with mercy. His grace. Hallelujah. This love calls us to obey. Everybody say obey. obey. This love demands that we, we obey. The, the, the Bible says that if you keep just Jesus speaking, he says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love these things i've spoken to you so that your joy might be filled that your joy 
that this joy might be full in you. The love of God brings joy in our lives. Amen. It's completion in our lives. How many of anybody ever been to a place where you felt like your life wasn't complete? Like something keep is, is just missing somewhere. You, you <coughs> listen, you know what completes that? The joy of the Lord. Amen. The love of God in our hearts. It's an amazing love. It's a transformation kind of love. His love calls us to obey. The Bible says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. I wonder if there's anybody here this morning, you say, you know, yeah, I love the Lord. Hallelujah, I love the Lord, but you see that person, boy? You see that person? Them, them can handle themselves between them and God. But you see me and them, me yeah, and nothing to do with them. Thank God we have nobody like that here this morning. <laughs> the Bible says if you love me you will keep my commandments and what is the commandment that Jesus was talking about what is the main commandment that he was saying he says this is the commandment that you what love one another Amen. love one another you are commanded to love one another you can't say that you love God and hate your own brother Yes, Lord, I love you. You know, we have a good thing going, God. But you see, sister, so and so. You see, brother, so and so, who does come and feed assembly and they sit on with a smile on their face. And I know all the business. I know everything that's going on. See them, I can't handle people like that at all. I have no love for them kind of people at all. Forget them. Lord, you deal with them. Strike them down. But Lord, I love you. Eh? I, you know, you know, I love you. I love you, Lord. Thank God we have nobody like that in this place. But you can never tell her. Eh? And just in case you are here like that, somebody say, because the Bible says you are a liar and the truth of God is not in you. And you have deceived yourself. Because how can you say you love God who you have not seen. And hate your own brother who you see every day. Amen. Bible says the love of God is not in you. You might have a feeling towards God. But that's not love. Because love will be demonstrated. To your fellow men. If you say you love God, you will love your brothers. You will love your sisters. You will love that wife. You will love that husband. Despite what may have been transpiring in their life. You will learn to love them. I want you to poke somebody next to you and say, I love you with the love of God. And don't lie! You have to mean it! <laughs> I'm giving you one more chance. One more chance. <laughs> Look at that person and say, I love you with the love of God. Woo! <laughs> this love calls us to bear fruit. This is a love that is demonstrated in our lives. It's not just something we talk about. It's not just something we feel good. Lord, I love you. I sing it. is concerned. Love is an action. Love produces. It bears fruit. What is the fruit of love? I'll show you. 1 Corinthians 13, 4. We all know this. Ooh, some of us are going to get convicted here this morning. Love is patient. Uh oh. Love is patient. I got stand around me. I fell out. <laughs> love is patient love is kind oh yeah, yeah. some of us had to go home and repent today <laughs> I love you. 
that we have our way at all times that's not love it is not irritable or resentful it does not rejoice at wrongdoing but rejoices with the truth love bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things Love never fails. Can I ask you something? Are you enduring all things? <laughs> this is the mark. This is the bearing. This is the production of love. Love calls us to bear fruit. Love calls us to bear witness of God. In 1 John 3, 1, it says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called the children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. We are called to bear witness of the love of God. We are called to bear witness of the Father, the Father of light. We call to bear witness of the Father of love. And the Bible says that the world didn't know him, so that's why the world will not know you. So my question is, if the world is comfortable with you, if the world really knows you, do they really know the Father in you? Because the Bible says the world did not know the Father. And what does light have to do with darkness? And, and there's, a, there's a defining line. When we demonstrate the love of God, guess what? You know sometimes we think that if we love people that you will immediately be loved back. Uh-uh. No. The Bible says in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let me define that just a little bit more. When you could care less about God. When you were on your own mission, your own agenda. When you didn't even believe God. You even doubted his, his existence. You doubted his love. You doubted anything about God. As a matter of fact, when any anytime somebody said anything about God, you, you hated them. The Bible says when you were in that condition, Christ died for us. Amen. That's love. Love bears all things. This love calls us to obey. It calls us to bear witness of God. This love calls us to go into all the world and preach the gospel and preach with your life. Matthew 28, 19 and 20, we all know it. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded, and lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. When this love is in you, there are five things very quickly, I'm going to close with this. We have some babies to dedicate this morning. But there are five things that you will notice. One, you will notice the love for the Savior. If the love of God is in you, you will have a passion for Jesus. You will have a love for Jesus. And the second thing, not only will you have a love for Jesus, and the love for the Savior, you will have a love for Scripture. You will have a love for His Word. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Third thing, you will have a love 
for the church, you'll have a love for the sanctuary, you'll have a love for the people of God. And we just read that scripture. How is it that you can say that you love God and hate your own brethren? It doesn't work like that. If you really have the love of God, it will be demonstrated even within the body of Christ. Can I encourage you this morning? Can I encourage you this morning? Don't take the love of God for granted. This love that he has called us to demonstrate, don't take it for granted. Show love. Show love to one another. Come on, this is, the, we're not faking this thing, you know, this is reality. This is the love of God we're talking about. Love one another. If you say you love God, love one another. You'll have a love for the house of God. Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. I want you to know this morning I was going to preach a message about heaven speaks because there are things that are taking place right now but the Lord just said no that's not the time right now just focus on, on my love for a moment but we're going to get to a message that I believe will, is going to rock our world but I want you to know that God is speaking through the heavens even right now Amen. he's sending signals to mankind and we need to pay attention. We need to wake up as we see the day approaching. The Bible says that. It says, especially as you see the day approaching, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together, but exhort one another. Come together. Encourage one another. Love the brethren. Stick together. You will have a love for the things of God, the sanctuary, the, the people of God. You will have a love for the saints and you will have a love for the sinner. <laughs> you will have a love for the sinner. Even those people who seem to rub you the wrong way. Even those people who might walk in these doors and they may look like a sinner. For some people, how dare they come to this church looking like this? There will be a love for people. We are not called to judge people, you know. We are called to point them to the love of God. Amen. And let God do the rest in their life. Amen. Let God bring the transformation. Let Him bring the change in their hearts. Overwhelm them with grace and mercy. Our job is just to lead them. To love them. And if the love of God is in you, you will have a passion and a love for, for sinners. You'll have a, a passion for the lost. And I thank, that's why I thank God for this team. The love of God was demonstrated so mightily through them. And they didn't care who, whoever we met experienced the love of God. Man. And that was the most impactful thing. Just something as simple as waiting to, to catch our flight from Bogota into Leticia. And just waiting in the terminal there and the team would just break out in song. And just demonstrate the love of God and they're rejoicing. And you should have seen the look on people's face. Like they've never seen anything like that in their life. And they were just sitting there and they were just looking and observing. And, and the children will be coming a little closer. <laughs> Just to experience the joy that was radiating from this team. Wherever we go, there was just a love for people. It didn't matter what. I remember one night we were at the Coliseum and we were praying for people. And, uh, the, and Pastor Wesley began to bring the word and the rain started to fall. And I remember everyone just scattering just to find shelter except for a few men who just sat there in the rain and would not dare move because the word of God gripped their hearts and they didn't budge and the rain was coming down heavy and they just stood there listening intently to the word of God and when the salvation call was given they responded and one thing I love about the team is that man, some of the guys from the team, they just left the shelter and they just walked in the rain and they just put their hand around those people. 
right there in the rain the rain was falling but the love of God was demonstrated man in a powerful way and I see showing up there this morning showing was one of them this guy he began to boy he was just beginning to cry out to God and showing just man he just left what he was doing he came and man, he just put his arms around that man and just embrace him a sinner in need of a savior never seen the love of God demonstrated so powerfully but that was just one of the many things listen we are called to be the light of this world we are called to demonstrate the love of God his love his love has to be shed abroad in our hearts it's not just something you talk about it's something that you live in your homes it's something that you demonstrate to your family. It's something that you demonstrate even in the workplace with your job. The people you come into contact with. You see the love of God is not split in slices where you demonstrate the love of God just on a Sunday. But whenever any other day comes we just live like however we want to. That's not the love of God. We have deceived ourselves and the truth is not in us. The love of God is who we are every single day of our lives it's either you love God or you don't choose either this day who you will serve if you're gonna serve Jesus you're gonna to have to realize that the mandate to love one another even as Christ has loved us is upon your life We don't get the privilege of demonstrating attitudes towards people. That's not our right. Because you were bought with a price. You are no longer your own. You are an ambassador and a representation of Jesus Christ. So live like it. And as John Hagee would say, and act like it in Jesus' name. We have to demonstrate the love of God. How many of us are committed to demonstrate God in, in His love in a powerful way in every single day of our lives? 